Okay, folks, let's do some electric circuits, some basic electric circuits. We're going to talk about parallel and series circuits, but before we do that, let's look at what are called schematic diagram symbols. You see, we're going to make some drawings, and we're going to make some drawings of circuits, and these drawings are going to represent things. That's what a schematic diagram does. We all remember the schematic diagram from a heat engine. Of course, you open up the car hood. Did you look and see that diagram of a heat engine? No, but it represented the car engine or any heat engine in general. Same thing with schematics. When we have schematic diagrams, we're going to use some symbols to be, to be used in our electric circuits that we're going to be drawn. So, wire, all right? Wire, pretty simple. The wire, the wire is a straight line. Line, okay, with me? Line. You know what? If you have a whole bunch of those, you would have a whole bunch of lines, that would be a pride of lines. <laughs> a pride of lines. But, uh, okay, all right. Battery, battery, battery. Let's go big little, positive. You don't have to put the positive and negative in there. Sometimes you'll see it on there, but big little battery power source that's what we're going to be using a light bulb a light bulb is a line a wiggly and then a line with a circle that's a light bulb sometimes you'll see it though sometimes you will see a light bulb like this it'll be like a circle with a thing in it looking like that i always use that though hey you know what you say tomato i say tomato right uh-huh 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 all right, a resistor. A resistor is the same thing as a light bulb, except you don't have the bulb thing around it. So a resistor is squiggly line. In fact, a resistor and a light bulb, well, a light bulb is a resistor. Okay, a light bulb is a resistor, but it's used so often. There's so many light bulbs and diagrams that we're going to be using, and the ones that we do in lab, we're going to be using, you know, light, but we're light bulbs. So we give the light bulb a special, light bulb special, okay, like some of you out there, mm-hmm, special. All right, so that is a resistor with a circle, special. Now, a resistor, it can represent I mean, your coffee maker, your strudel maker, your toast fryer, whatever it is. You know, anything that's gonna use that electricity and it's gonna slow down the flow of electricity while it's being used, you got a resistor. Okay, it's gonna represent a billion, a billion different things. Awesome powers, you with me? A few of you, okay, good, good. Now, a capacitor. The capacitor is going to be like that. That represents our parallel plate capacitor. You watched the video on capacitor, I hope, I hope, I hope you did. A voltmeter, that's something that measures volts. Not only that's too hard, is it? Okay, I think you got that one, a voltmeter. Yeah, that's just a circle with a V. An ammeter measures amps. That's a circle with an A. All right, not difficult, not difficult. Oh no, oh, I've got the switch. We've got to put the switch in there. The switches, so let's move you out of the way. We'll put the switch over here. A switch is going to be dot, dot, line, line. And this would be a closed switch. This one's closed. And this one would be dot, open, dot. This would be open switch. Okay, so we got dot, dot, line, line, that represents the wires going into the switch. And this is a closed switch and an open switch. All right, this one has some, a sweater on and some jeans. <laughs> it's closed. <laughs> got closed sweater and jeans on, it's closed. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Yeah, an open switch. Of course, the lights are on right now. I mean, you're probably thinking with me, the lights are on, all right, but nobody's home. Yeah, I know, I agree with you too. Um, the, the lights are on, well, why is that? Well, over here is a switch. Hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, shut the lights off. What does that mean? What, which one of the switch positions would this be? All right, it's open or closed right now, right now. Well, the lights are on, so it's got to be closed. That allows electricity to flow through the circuit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If we open up the switch, in other words, shut the lights off, that's what's going to happen because we just, you know, you open the switch, the, the light goes off, on, off, on. Okay, so those are switches. Those will go into our uh, circuits as well. You'll see these are very common things that you'll see in electrical circuit diagrams. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of these. Okay, did you get them down? Get them down. What, what do you mean? We'll get we'll write them down. What are you, what are you doing? All right, you get up there drooling. Oh, wait. Okay, all right. Okay, all right, I'm moving on. Okay, you snooze, you lose. Here we go. So, Let's draw some basic circuit diagrams for basic circuits. 
Now there are two, whoa, geez, what are you doing down there? Things are falling apart, okay? Not me, not me, I'm not falling apart, but this is, we have two basic kind of circuits I'll draw here. One is a series circuit and one is a parallel circuit, a series circuit, parallel circuit. Okay, start with a uh, series circuit. Okay, series circuit. Okay, uh, series means everything's in one line. In fact, series means one path, one path. And the plural for path is pathi. Did you know that? It is. You can look it up. Yeah. One pathi grasshopper. Grasshopper. Remember grasshopper from the, the TV show? show David Carradine back in the 70s. We all we know, remember where we were when we watched that show. Awesome show called Kung Fu. Wah! Yeah. Grasshopper was his name when he was a little kid getting trained. Okay. So one pathi. Series. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? All right. Well, let's all draw one for you here. Here's a series circuit. What do we got there? Yeah, battery. Sure. Okay. Battery. And we got a wire coming out, and maybe that wire goes to a light bulb. Okay. And maybe the wire goes and goes to another light bulb. Okay. And then maybe we go to a little light bulb. Okay. All right. Okay. There we go. That's a series circuit. Well, why is this a series circuit? Because the electricity has no choice. No choice for you. Okay. This is not a high quality, this is not American circuit, because in America we get choice. This, no choice, okay? You must do this. If you're an electron, okay, you would be moving out, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, choo, choo. You'd be moving out of the negative end of our power source. That's why it's called the negative end. That's where the electrons move out from, okay? And so the electrons come out, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, choo, choo. And as they're moving around this path, they don't have any choice but to go around the path. There, there is no other way for the electrons to go except around this one path. Okay, now, on the way around, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, choo, choo, we'll have them do a little bit of work. We'll have them do some work and light that light bulb up. Ball! And, you know, light, light this one, do ball, this one, do ball. And maybe these light bulbs are uh, two ohms. Ohms at the horseshoe. The horseshoe is our symbol. Mm -hmm. you, you remember that. You remember that from the video, V-I-R. Mm -hmm. Yeah, resistance. That's our ohm symbol for resistance is the, is the upside down horseshoe. Okay, so we got two ohms, and maybe this one is a, oh, I don't know, I'll be imaginative and make it a two ohms. And let's make this one, I don't know, let's use our imagination, be creative. Two, yeah, exactly, two ohms. So each one of these light bulbs are two sweet, sweet ohms of resistance. All right, now, if I want to know what the total resistance is, what I would do when it comes to series is you would simply add up the resistances. Very, very straightforward. So if you want to know R total, and that's represented by R sub T, total resistance. We all know resistance is futile, okay? Yeah, and Captain Picard, remember from Star Trek, the Borg, resistance is futile. Yeah, a few of you out there get it, and it's good. There's still hope for my country. Woohoo! Now, R total, total resistance, is the R1. We'll call this one resistor one. Or whatever, you can call that one resistor one or whatever you want to do, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll call this resistor one, resistor two, resistor three. We add them all up directly. So R1 plus R2 plus D2. <laughs> R2 plus D2, R2, D2. So Star Wars for you. Okay, we've got Star Trek and Star Wars in the same video. This is a sweet video, isn't it? Yeah. So R1 plus R2 plus R3. So if we want to get the total resistance, we just go, okay, two plus two plus two. Anybody got a calculator? All right. All right, what do you got? Billy, you got it? I got it, yeah, it's six. Okay, thank you, Billy. So six ohms would be my total resistance. Okay, all right, okay. Now, let's say that I connected these to a, oh, I don't know, let's say a six volt battery. So my battery is six volts. Now what we could also do is we could calculate what the current, the flowage, the flowage, I like that word, the flowage of those electrons is. What's the current? The current, is equal to, well, we all know, okay, we all know that V is equal to I times R, okay? That is a muy importante, grande equation when it comes to electric circuits. That is like F, that's like FAMA, F is equal to MA is to mechanics as Ohm's law, Veer is to, to the circuitry. Okay, so if I want to know what the current is, and I'll take the voltage, divide it by the resistance, the voltage is six, Okay, divided by the resistance. This is going to give me the total current, IT, total current. I take the total voltage, which is 6. There's only one volt source here, so the total is 6. Divided by RT, which we just calculated with our awesome calculator. 
and that's six as well. So the amount of flowage here would be, anybody calculate it too? Wait, this, is a, this is difficult math, people, okay? All right, this is hard. One, one, okay. So one amp, one amp. Remember, our current is measured in amperes, amps, 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 amps. All right, now, and what that means, this would be the amps is the amount of coulombs per second. So that would be one coulomb per second of flowage through this circuit, one coulomb. And of course, we can start talking about a coulomb. Remember, a coulomb's really big, so it's, that's some sweet flowage, one amp. A lot of coulombs moving there. So, boom, there we go. Okay, that is a very simple series circuit. Now, here's the thing about series circuit, though. The more important, if one goes out, they all go out. You've all heard the, 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 the 12 pains of Christmas, okay? It's a Christmas carol. Rigging up these lights. Yeah, what is it? Um, uh, what is it? Uh, rigging up these lights. Oh, partridge. Part, uh, something about a pear tree or something. I don't know. But you know the song. But anyways, there's this portion of the song where the guy goes, I'll oh, sign your Christmas cards. And, ah, oh, hangovers. That, that one, okay? A few of you are getting it. Okay, anyways. There's one part there where it says, if one goes out, they all go out, fine. You rig up the lights. Mm -hmm. If one goes out, they all go out. So if this one, all of a sudden, the, the, the filament in this one goes and goes out, game over for everybody. Game over for everyone. The flowage cannot get past. This is like the drawbridge is down and you, you're, you're, you're a car going down the highway. Yeah, you're done, you're done, you, you can't go anywhere. Well, what about these? What about, what about the electrons don't go this way? They don't go that way. They don't go out of the positive. They go out of the negative. Oh, okay, wait a minute. Let's put that bridge back together. Okay, I got a light bulb. Okay, Billy, what do you want to do now? What do you want to do? Make this one go out. Okay, okay, Billy. There we go. Okay. Everybody's dead. Everybody's dead? Well, what about this one? The electrons can still go through that one, can't they? And this one, those should light up, shouldn't they? No, they won't. Eh, 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 eh. Because you won't get anything happening unless you've got a complete circuit. You have to complete the circuit for anything to move. If any part of the circuit breaks down, the whole thing breaks down. Well, that sounds kind of stupid. Yeah, well, that's the way it is, Billy. You know what? That's just the way it is. Isn't there some kind of a circuit that if one goes out, they'd all go out? Exactly. Okay. Let's talk about that. That's called the parallel circuit. That's next. Okay. So there is your series circuit. If one goes out, they all go out. And, oh, one more thing before we close out the basic series circuit is if we added another, let's say we add another light bulb and just for kicks and giggles and it's another two ohmer then what happens is my resistance increases to eight so the more things that you connect in series the more resistance there is and remember resistance is rah, trying to slow you down so what would that do to the current the flowage if you put more things in series more rah, stop 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 you'll get less flowage yes you would in fact we would take the six volts and divide it by eight and we would see that that would be less than one because we're adding things in series we slow the electricity down. And the more bulbs you add in series, the dimmer they get. Mm-hmm, they do. They get dimmer, 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 dimmer. So uh, if we take this back out, less resistance, more flowage, brighter bulbs. Uh-huh, that's another thing that happens when things are connected in series. Series circuits are easy to connect. They're, they're really easy to do. Simplest circuit is a series circuit. Uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty simple. Okay, all right, now, let's get rid of this. We're gonna use the same elements but we'll talk about a parallel, a parallel circuit. Now a parallel circuit is, well, series circuit is one path I, then the parallel circuit is more than one path I, which is plural for path, which makes sense now because we have more than one path, right? Path I, mm -hmm. you get it, you get it. So parallel circuit is more than one path I. Okay, more than one path. Now, more than one path, we'll use the same elements that I had before. We'll put a light bulb. We'll connect it to a light bulb. Connect it to a light bulb. Connect it to our power source. There it is. That was our six volt power source. And each one of these were two ohms. We got the same light bulbs 
same power source, but we connected them in parallel, meaning that there's more than one option for these electrons to go. So here come the electrons out of this negative end. Chugga, 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 chugga. Very good, choo-choo. Okay, here they go, run down the line. Now, when they get to this juncture, it's called a juncture, then they have a choice. The electrons can go this way and this way. Some go this way, some go this way. So they can go this way, boop, 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 or they can keep going up here. And when they get here, they have another choice to make. So many choices, I don't know what to do, which way? Well, that's a very nice way, I don't know. That's a very nice way too. Scarecrow, okay, Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You remember, yeah. So now, we got electrons can go here, here, or here. So there's choice here. Choice, it's parallel. What happens here is, if one goes out, they don't all go out. Okay, well, back in my day, Christmas lights were lit up, one goes out, they all go out there in series. And it was always fun to watch my dad try to figure out which light bulb it was that was out. So he would take the you know, spare bulbs and unscrew each one and put that one in, plug it back in, see if it turns out. Wacka, wacka. I learned a lot of colorful adjectives when he was doing that. And you know, sometimes you get to the end and he couldn't figure it out, which means there was more than one out. And boy, are you screwed. Okay, yeah. Time to just, just go down and get an thing of lights. They're not very expensive. But no, he had to try to, try to do it. That's, okay, anyways, moving on. All right, now if one goes out, they don't all go out. Let's say this one goes out. Bzzz. Okay, now the electrons can go down this path and get back to the positive. That's what they're trying to do, get back to the positive. Or they can go down this path and get back to the positive. So they can get back even though one's going out. In fact, if, if two goes out, they can still get back. Bzzz. So the circuit would still function. At least part of the circuit would still function. That's the advantage of parallel. If one goes out, they all, all don't go out. Okay. And the other thing is two, uh, if you have, you want to use maybe something connected up here, maybe it's not a light bulb, you want to use this, you can flip a switch on this and use this, and you don't have to have these being in use. That's a real pain if you, 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 you know, if you have these things in series and you have a coffee maker and a strudel maker and a pasta maker all lined up in series and you know, I only use the pasta maker, then you have to have the other things on as well, and that's kind of inconvenient. This way, we can only have to have one thing at a time that we can use the others don't have to be working. Okay, so that's parallel. Well, let's do a quick, real quick math on this like we did last time. Let's calculate the total resistance, total resistance, RT. When it's in series, what we do is we add them in reciprocal. We add them in reciprocal. So R1, one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over D2. I get you, I get you. Yeah, I got you that time. Okay, this is gonna give me actually not RT, but it'll give me one over RT. This is how we solve for resistance in a parallel circuit. So you add them in reciprocal and it gives you the answer in reciprocal. Oh, why don't you just flip them all back over and you'll be a little bit. No, that's, that's not how it works mathematically. Try that and see if you get the same answer we're gonna get, you won't. Okay, so try this. Let's do the math. Oh, I love fractions. I remember fractions, it was like fourth grade. It was awesome, it was, math was so much fun. Do you remember that back then? Math was fun back then. What happened, right? What happened? So fractions, one over RT plus one over two. Okay, because they're all two. I left them all the same. We use the same things as in the series. So one over two plus one over two plus one over two. Okay, you can do this. You're relatively intelligent people. Come on, one half plus one half. So it's one plus a half is, is, is one and a half, right? Or three halves, three halves. So that's three halves. All right, so three halves. I mean, sometimes you would have to do the common denominator thing. Remember that? Oh, man, we're going back, aren't we? Yeah, but this time we don't have to. It's just easy. One half, one half, one half. It's three halves. But that's going to give me the resistance is one over RT. That gives me one over RT. Now, I don't want one over RT. I want RT. So what you do is you flip your answer. Always got to remember that when you get the parallel resistance, flip the answer. Flip it, flip it, flip it. Okay, so flip this, flip this, and I get RT. In other words, one over RT is three halves, RT is two thirds. Two thirds of an ohm. Much less when we had the same things connected in, pair, in, in series. Remember, there was two and two and two. There was a six, there was six ohms of resistance. This is two thirds of an ohm. Whoa, much, much less resistance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's check out what happens to the current when that resistance is that low. Check it out. Let's do the current. Current is equal to, well, let's see, okay, remember current, VIR, so I is equal to V over R, V is six, six, divided by two thirds. All right, so six divided by uh, two thirds, that'd be the same thing as multiplying by three halves, 
And that'd be 18 divided by two is nine. So we would get nine. Whoa, nine amps, nine coulombs per second. That's like, that is electrons just zipping on by. A little, little Doppler effect there for you with those electrons. So now the, look what happened. When we put the same elements with the same volt, volt source in parallel, the current goes whoosh, boom, much faster, much less resistance. The advantage of doing it this way is if one goes out, they don't all go out. You can have one on and the other two don't have to be on to use it if it's a different resistor like a light bulb. But the disadvantage is that the current can go so fast, so fast, so fast, that you can cause a fire, fire. That can cause, that can cause uh, ooh, scary stuff to happen. All right, this video just got over 20 minutes. I'm gonna stop this video and we'll talk about this scary stuff in the next video, okay? All right.